just hit record. Yeah, yeah. Just record. Hit um, time. Record. <laughs> I was thinking of talking about like the fact that there is so much media. Um, and so it's like in general. Yeah. And I mean, sure. The bright side of being stuck inside with COVID is like, yeah, we have a whole bunch of stuff to watch. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that like that FOMO isn't as bad because you can just, you can't be like, well, I have to stay inside. So I'm going to watch it. You're not missing out. And so like, you know, we, we had that a bit with like Tiger King and we watched all of that. <laughs> of all the things that I've been watching though, I've watched Total Trash because we've watched Tiger King. I've mm. watched All of Love is Blind, which was garbage, but great. Um, what is that? That's, uh, so it's kind of like, it feels like MTV reality TV again. Mm. Did it, did I see an episode or two of that? I don't know. When I came over? Maybe. Yes. You with, did. The, with the awful girl that Maddie kept talking yes, about. Yes, you did. Yes, okay. it's that one. It didn't yes. get much better. But basically, <laughs> it starts off with this premise that all these people have signed up for this like love experiment. And the whole mm-hmm. experiment is they're going to go on dates and get to know people mm-hmm. blindly. And so they go into what they call these pods. And the pods are pretty comfy. They can chill and relax, but they can mm-hmm. hear the other person on the other side of the pod in their own pod, and that's mm-hmm. how they discuss, but they can't see each other. Yeah. And the only way for them to continue is if they propose. Um, like, so literally there's one couple that within three days of talking and dating, the, the guy proposed, and that's how you see them for the first time. Mm-hmm. And it makes this big deal about coming out, and so then once they advanced with, like, six couples, it um, they went on, like, a, a pre-honeymoon thing to, like, mm-hmm. Mexico, like, this really beautiful area, and they had this whole, like, honeymoon thing, get to know each other more. One couple ended up fighting and falling apart, and so they left. And then the rest proceeded through the rest of the show, which, after the honeymoon thing, they go back and they move into the same apartment together as they're trying to plan a wedding. All within a month, by the mm. way. Um, and hey, then don't they don't plan a wedding in a month. <sighs> yeah. No. <laughs> it was, But also, I'm like, you know... Maddie was watching it with me and she was like, you know, this is all paid for. Like they have like all this stuff paid for. So it makes it a little easier, Mm -hmm. but like they start to have issues and fall apart and you're like, Oh, who's going to make it to the end? Because they all get Mm -hmm. to the wedding part, but then at the altar where they could say I do or whatever, they can also say, I don't. And a few of them do say I don't. And so they don't last Mm -hmm. as a couple. I actually think there was only two couples that made it at the end. Was your favorite couple one of the ones that made it? Yes. Yay. Yeah. They made it. Um, You're still just kind of like, how are, how long are you going to make it really? But for the sake of the show, it was exciting because you're like, oh, I was kind of rooting for them. Um, I mean, reality TV is such that like a lot of that is manufactured anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, Or the producers will try and like, you know, set these people up so that they don't work or set these people up and make them pretend that they do work. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that's probably what they did in a way too. And like, I think part of it was genuine, but then obviously you never know. Mm -hmm. Hey, you guys are going to be the ones that make it. It's like, all right, cool. Yeah. So you got to make it and we're going to set you up as like the real, cause you know, they're the kind of the couple like everyone loved. Yeah. And so, you know, Maddie was like, I don't know if they're going to make it. I'm like, Oh, they're going to make it. They've been like, pining and pining for this couple sure, to work sure. since the beginning and so that that's what that whole show was and it I mean it was also well produced i guess also there's like you know cultures that do arrange marriages yeah that like they don't really get to know they don't even get who to know they're gonna all. marry they just hey your parents chose this for you and you're marrying this person you're stuck with them and those are actually like they don't even get of, to talk to them right but like those are actually some of the more like long-standing and loving marriages that like yeah because we've learned to love each other over all this time Mm -hmm. which is like interesting um see what i mean we're getting into stuff that isn't what we started this podcast about but hey let's talk about it (laughs) um do you believe in soulmates um yeah i mean considering like i'm very like my like my background with like my faith and stuff, mm. I kind of believe like it's all kind of up to design anyway. Um, so I believe in, you know, like, you know, the person that you end up with is kind of your soulmate in a way because you can have like somebody that like compliments you and in, mm. in like a lot of ways that you don't know about yourself. I think yeah. that's kind of what makes like a soulmate in a lot of ways. Uh, I should probably define 
soulmate, which yes. is like I think the idea of a soulmate is like your spirits are meant to be together and like you are the ideal people for each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think I'm, I'll extend that to you. Do you believe in soulmates? My wife. <laughs> <laughs> My, My wife. wife. Thank uh, you. No. I will always She's say like, that. no, now I don't. Sorry. <laughs> We're done. Um, references. Um, I like to think that soulmates are real. Um, as I change every day with my own kind of like views on the world and everything. Yeah. I think there's usually someone out there for the other person where, yeah, they like mesh really well. Mm. Well, I also think a lot of people get like really hung up and, well, I met this person and they felt like my soulmate, but now things are changing around us. And I think, you know, soulmates can come with change, too, because as a human being, everyone's going to change as you go. Uh, so, well, it's, yeah, a lot of people try and get like rooted in like this idea, like you have to just be how you were. And it's kind of like, well, you know, I think you can still be soulmates and still like work through mm. like life changes and changes together. And sure. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I will say because um, we've been binging um, the, good place, the Good Place, which is I do want to watch that show. So good, somewhat circling back. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. It it has like stupid moments where it's just like really, but then like for the most part, it's really good. Mm-hmm. And they they talk about soulmates because mm-hmm. that's like one of the first things that you find out on yeah. the first episode. Um, so um, Kristen Bell's character Eleanor, she has like a soulmate mm-hmm. whose name is Chidi. And, like, obviously, like, they're two of the main four to yeah, more uh, characters. Yeah. Spoiling anything. Um, Takes place in the afterlife, the, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I the, know that much, at least. Yeah. But no. the two of them are paired since the beginning. Yeah. And, like, as the show progresses, I personally kind of feel like, yes, they are soulmates more and more mm-hmm. through everything. Mm-hmm. Like, if you also remember sure. all of it, like, yeah, would you yeah. not agree? <laughs> yeah. Well. Without spoiling anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm really just going to say I don't believe in soulmates. Mm, okay. And that's, that informs how I'm going to explain this. Yeah. Is that they spent, like, years and years together, like, even through the things that happen in the show without spoiling things. <laughs> um end up being like hundreds of years yeah um so i mean of course you learn to adapt and love that person Mm -hmm. so i i don't believe in soulmates i think that like i don't know i don't believe in soulmates because of statistics i guess but like also just because of the nature of relationships and humans and everything yeah is that if if you think like oh there's someone out there that's perfect for me Mm -hmm. and they happen to live in the same city that i do like well right yeah you didn't look that far right to have like the perfect person like if if you're going off of the like billions of people that are on earth while you're alive Mm -hmm. like Statistically, it's probably more likely that they live somewhere else. I guess I could also say, like, (laughs) that kind of does kind of... Well, you know, like, I believe in, like, a way... Like I said, things are designed to be as they are or whatever. Sure, sure. But also, like, soulmate doesn't have to be so attached to just one person. Because I also view, like, Mm -hmm. you know, Sable, Maddie, and Cheryl as, like, my soulmates, Mm -hmm. as my girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like... It's just like, a, you know, in a way, it's not necessarily the this is the only one mm. or this is right, but, the and end that's, game. That's the definition of soulmate that I'm running okay, yeah. off of. I mean, then I guess I wouldn't necessarily agree with that, but it's like a like an asterisk next to it. Yeah. Because yeah. it's kind of like <laughs> yes and no. But yeah, I guess you could just say it's like soulmate equals compatibility. Yeah. In a way. Compatibility and then like just loving the person for like as they are and who they become or Mm -hmm. change to be or whatever. And you kind of change and grow together. Yeah. That kind of thing. Uh, So, I mean, it's like, that's not like an ideal, like, Oh, you are the perfectly compatible person for the blah, blah, blah design through everything. It's like, no, we all grow and 
change and adapt. And if we learn to grow and change and adapt with each other, then it'll work. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily have to hinge upon a like magical supernatural thing that means that our souls are linked. It just means that we're, we're capable of doing this thing together. Well, there's like tons of stories too about people that get married and stay together all their lives. And then one of them passes away and that was like, their soulmate essentially, but then they, the other person left behind ends up finding someone else. love in another way. And mm-hmm. that can also be like their soulmate. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Which, I think a lot of people yeah. do cling onto that word as like, right. And sometimes it can be in a way that is, can be bad. Cause they're like, well, they're my soulmate. So I have to stick through it. Right. And it's like, well, yeah. I mean like, yes and no, but no, like, you know, like people that are in like abusive relationships <laughs> or they're being like yeah, yeah. domestic violence and stuff. They're mm-hmm. like, but like, you know, they were, we were so great. And it's like, right. no, he's like hitting you. You need to get and, out. And like, that's, he's not and your that's why <laughs> I see that, like having this notion, this fixation on like the one is. You need to harmful. work on it's, it. It's like, harmful. Yeah. yeah. Um, you need to work on like. Everyone needs to work on it. Yeah. Even in if, the relationships you're in. Even if, yeah. quote unquote, they are the one, we all have to work on it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, like, I don't think. So, circling all the way back, uh, of course, that Love is Blind show is like, no, they're not going to actually end up married. They do, they do also all, always refer to each other as soulmates. So, like, oh, I met my soulmate in three days and I didn't even know their face. Like, they kept saying stuff like that. And you're just like, okay. They're right. trying to, like, be really romantic and whimsical about mm-hmm. it. And you're like, eh. But they in the way that they officiated the ceremonies, we were like, is that legal? Like, I don't even think they actually were legally married on the show. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like maybe yeah. after the fact if they really wanted to. Mm-hmm. But for right. drama Or even sake, like a, an even smaller thing like uh uh bestie picks bay yeah <laughs> where like yeah that's curtis, basically love is blind <laughs> right right 100%. but like curtis had yeah his best friend on there and, like yeah. they didn't date no oh oh you have tea about that though i have tea you do. that was the whole you also have i also tea, have literally. actually have tea literally but tea. apparently that was like i don't know if curtis and drew are still friends i don't haven't watched some of this stuff in the wild, but like with the Justine girl that got picked, like they didn't, yeah, mm-hmm. her and Drew didn't date really have any sort of connection, but he kind of turned out to be a jerk and mm. did a lot of stuff like ghosting her, you know, ditching her, like standing her up, uh, embarrassing her in front of his friends. And then yeah. there was kind of drama where Curtis stood up for him and kind of outcast her. And then she came out about everything and mm-hmm. Curtis felt really bad and like kind of with took it. So now I'm not even sure if him and Drew are still friends, <laughs> but that just goes to show like, oh man, you know, I really kind of liked this guy when I saw him on YouTube, but mm-hmm. now I find out from this person I feel is a little bit more genuine because she just doesn't have mm-hmm. clout friends or clout chasers around her. She has no yeah. reason to lie and doesn't benefit from it. So when she came <laughs> out about her story with everything, I kind of believed her and I'm like, yeah, I could see him wanting to just chase this fame mm-hmm. thing. Because well, Curtis had all the fame. Oh, yeah. And Drew didn't have any of it. He was yeah, just yeah. his friend. But people loved him when Curtis brought him on. And so that he, got to his he head. Was a yeah. Clout chaser. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. If you look at the dude's Instagram, it's like, oh, yeah, he's oh. trying to. Oh, yeah. Well, that, but it's like the two, like, so <clears throat> Drew and Jacqueline, right? No. What was Justine. Justine. Yeah. I knew it was a the, the girl. <laughs> um, they ended up like reacting to that video mm-hmm. and he was like bad mouthing like all the girls. It was kind of everything. uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. It was a video on her channel too, I think. And mm-hmm. they, you know, it was kind of edited in some ways that was funny, but she, she mentioned in her tell all video, like he kind of bad mouthed a lot of the girls, um, you know, was just kind of, she just didn't like his personality wasn't very charming mm-hmm. when the camera was off or mm-hmm. when it wasn't edited a certain way. And <laughs> I'm like, I mean, that makes sense. That's probably a lot of YouTubers for that matter. But oh, yeah. um, I felt kind of bad for her because she, you know, seemed pretty genuine and mm-hmm. cool, but also, you know, she was telling how this, the show went in general and, they definitely produce it and it's a reality show. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, do this. Don't do that. You know, you need to act really exaggerated yeah. here or there. And you're like, man, it's also, it, you know, you know, it's fake, but then you like, you know, it's fake. Right. Mm-hmm. And I mean, taking that cynicism, we should healthily take that cynicism into everything. Both like, oh, there's this dumb reality show where people get in these pods and then they like marry each other. <laughs> and take that same cynicism and go like, well, any person that makes content 
on YouTube, you're not seeing all of who they are Mm -hmm. or all of what they're, you're only seeing what they're giving you. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, I, I try my best to not filter it out. I hardly edit this podcast. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I like, and most of the time stop and go to the bathroom or something, right. Most of the time when I follow YouTubers, I find it like a good sign if they have a podcast because Mm -hmm. most of them don't edit those either. And Mm -hmm. so I'm like, even if they edit their YouTube videos, their personalities, if they're similar Mm -hmm. on their podcast to how their videos are, I'm like, okay, that's just how they are. Mm -hmm. But a lot of, yeah, a lot of YouTubers, it's kind of like they act one way, but then in public, it's like, yeah, they're a different person. Mm -hmm. And in a way I feel like people that don't have their identity on YouTube have found the best of both worlds. Cause like, they can yeah. have like you know like that the faceless youtubers or whatever yeah. they can like hide their face and have this big personality but then go into the real world and like no one knows Just who they are unless person. they recognize their voice yeah right so they have it probably made except for their identity being ever leaked that would suck but eh. i mean yeah it, it would suck because you would have all of the like all that would come rushing at you at once like oh yeah. hey and then that's when you get like people coming to your house and finding out all your info and mm-hmm. you're not prepared for that because you haven't been having that issue. So, but at the same time, those, those are probably the people who actually are extra secure about that stuff anyways. And so mm-hmm. even if like something would leak, they were like, all right, well, I already have like my emails that are churned through this system of mm-hmm. like security, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. so they probably, they're like already ready yeah, for they're it. They're already paranoid about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, every any person that's on camera or on mic or whatever is is not really I I mean, I'll be honest and say that, like, I do kind of have like a I'm recording now mode Mm -hmm. and I'm not. And whether or not I'm truly conscious of it, I I am different if I'm recording Mm -hmm. Uh, ish. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. I mean. (laughs) I mean, you know me 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, how different am I on? Mike I would say you're versus... really, you're really the same. Yeah. Yeah. You're about yeah. the same. And I think that's a good thing. Sure. I don't ever feel you're like putting on an act or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I do. Oop. If anything, the act is more like for the guest because I do have like, you almost have to put, on I have pres- background processes running yeah. in my brain right now. That makes Every sense. once in a while, I'll like, how know, to keep it going. I'll, I'll look back to see if like, am I clipping or mm-hmm. to see like, how long has we, have we been recording? And so like, I have background processes. Well, every and- podcast host, even if it's conversational, probably have to have a little bit of like something dialed up so they can like stay, they, they can't, they have to take care of that kind of stuff, you know? Sure. Sure. And uh- keep it going. Mm-hmm. have conversation going if like maybe you have guests that are like super reserved or quiet and you can't get a lot yeah. out of them so you almost have to put on an act to get more out of them than maybe you would with other people right or those podcasts are just shorter or that's that too <laughs> <laughs> which i mean i'm not gonna name names but like yeah i've had some podcasts that are shorter and that's because it was harder to just, yeah they yeah. would just answer the question yeah and then not kind of, not oh, here's a story it. or here's a thing. And here's, oh, that reminds me of this thing. And so whatever. I have a question for you. Yeah. Is dead air terrifying to you as a podcast host? That's fine. Okay, clearly not. <laughs> hey, but you have like atmospheric like birds and stuff chirping sure, outside. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like nice. We don't have our weird like exotic sounding animal anymore. I've Which, noticed. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, Remember? Yeah, the. There's like someone I on sent, our street. It was that clip I sent you and Maddie. Oh my gosh. That sounded like a monkey, right? Yeah. yeah. That was really weird. That was like in that direction. Like It was probably right like a street weird or small dog. Either a dog or like some really de- like dedicated kids just playing out in the yard. But I was also just like, Joe Exotic is from Oklahoma. <laughs> I mean, anything's possible that's now. That's true. Like, I never realized just how easy it is to buy a tiger and just yeah, have a $2,000. Like, oh, Why are they so cheap? Too? I, don't know. I don't know. I'm like, okay, my iMac was more expensive than a tiger. Yeah, exactly. That's, and, a, and a tiger, a, a Mac weird. dies in four years and yeah. a tiger will live for who knows how long. So, but hello, I mean, where's you, my investment going? I guess you have to spend like thousands of dollars just to feed oh, them. That's true. So, yeah, but that's that doesn't where go it comes to the, in. You have to feed thousands of dollars to feed your iMac. They want you to have AirPods. They want you to update everything. They want you to buy new equipment. 
all yeah. the time. And it's you have to have like an internet connection. And yeah. Pay your energy bills and such. But <laughs> it's also just how are all these tiger owner people like actually shitty people? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're characters, but they're also just bad people. And you're like, how are you? How are you all like this? Is it something about owning a tiger that brings it out in you? Probably. Or is yeah. it something in your life that leads everyone in the same path to buy a tiger? Well, so this does kind of my job as a podcaster is like to like tie threads together. So this is what I keep doing. Uh, <laughs> Tying um, threads. Yeah. Uh, and I cosplay. Uh, so <laughs> ties, ties thread. You have to, um, now you have to come back to that thread. Sure. You're just weaving uh, more threads. <laughs> But anyone that has a public persona, whether they want to acknowledge it or not, is doing a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing a thing by trying to not do a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm intentionally trying to not do a thing. Everybody uh, tries. To, yeah. Because like if you're putting it out there in public, you're kind of like either putting it all out there or you're mm -hmm. filtering it somewhat. Sure. And so anyone who is, I want to open a zoo and be an entertainer with these tigers and stuff, they are a kind of person mm -hmm. in the same way that a kind of person who wants to run for office is the kind of person that wants the things that come out of that, mm -hmm. that aren't just, Hey, I can make social change happen, but also I can make social change happen. Mm -hmm. Um, or it's people that are running a zoo and they're like, I have tigers and I've, I'm like super exotic and I got five wives. So I've yeah. got to act like mm -hmm. a crazy person or else it's weird. It doesn't work with my brand. Maybe sure. that's also why. Mm -hmm. Or or the former, which is like, I am a crazy person. Yeah, and that's I true. I mean, they wouldn't say that themselves, but they were like, <sighs> should I get sued? Um, <laughs> Where are you going? I mean, like... <laughs> Doc Antle is a cult leader. No, he is. That's not, mm -hmm. you're not going to get sued for that. Sure. Everyone is saying that. Right. Okay. If, well, if yeah, you're yeah. going to get sued, then a lot of people are going to get sued. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but hey, I guess if that's like a way for more it's people the definition, to listen to this podcast. But, uh, it's the <laughs> definition of a cult to basically brainwash people into staying mm -hmm. and sticking around. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that it's also all these very specific women that end up becoming his wives, lovers, whatever. Yeah. It's and literally so him paying for surgery to get implants it's and disgusting. everything. Yeah. yeah. Like there are some cults that are defined as cults that have actually done less. And it's like, Doc, Doc mm -hmm. Antle, you need to do less, mm -hmm. you're right. but you're still a cult. But <sighs> they're not right. going to call it that because he's going to be like, well, no, they're willing. It's like other cult yeah, yeah. members started off being willing. Yeah. And then it gets to the point where they're not anymore and they're yeah, stuck yeah. because it's all they know because they've been isolated from their friends and family. That's mm -hmm. the whole mindset. Right. But like, I guess in a way it was like, I want to start a cult. <laughs> what would be a good way of reeling people in? tigers mm -hmm. like if if he hadn't found tigers or actually, exotic animals he probably would have found some other way of luring in women to his weird cult yeah it always starts with power mm -hmm. like they just want yeah. power and so then it they'll never say it's a cult mm -hmm. they'll just be like no because and that's why they're so dangerous is mm -hmm. because it keeps people around and there's some that are extremely, you know, mm. a lot of other things that I would classify as cults that um, yeah. are still running today very successfully. And so you're kind of like, yeah, huh. he's so, got all the signs there. Yeah. And so to begin with, just acknowledge the things that are culty in everything, which is why I like, you know, right. Mikey was citing everything being a cult for a while there. Oh, uh, right. Hashtag his... listen to Metroid Mike. Oh, um, yeah, Mikey. <laughs> right. um, shout out. Yeah, I mean, and that's it. Kind of goes back to what we talked about hmm. last week. The uh, kind of the oh, with checking your stuff? privilege, but yeah. also check uh, how much of this is real or not. Like, like check yourself to make sure yeah, you're not yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> kind of almost like you kind of in a way need to have speculation about everything, mm -hmm. but you know. Yeah. You want to, you know, it's not bad to believe either, but you don't want to be like in the, in the point where 20 years down the line, you realize you're in a cult, right? You're yeah. like some guy's seventh wife and sure. you have children that 
now you have to look after. And, you know, I, mm. for a while I got into this long trend of watching um, escaping polygamy videos. Mm. And that's crazy. Mm. It, the amount of like control that those people have over yeah. the women and children within polygamous cults. And you're just like kind of horrified for them because now they're like they try and get away, but they want to mm. don't want to leave their kids there either. And they have what? Right. 15 kids. And yeah. so they're trying to like get them all free. Right. But they themselves like allowed this to happen and were yeah because at one point they they subscribed to the belief yeah yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like then they start to you know blame themselves like well i'm already a part of this and it's comfortable and it would be uncomfortable to leave Mm. and it's so messed up man like it's so sad yeah but like no one's immune to propaganda Mm -hmm. or suggestion or Mm -mm. cult Mm -hmm. leanings um so i mean what are the things that we're all watching that entice us to continue to Goodness, take Mark. part in this society? Money isn't real, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Money is a lie. I mean, it's... Marnie's yeah, peaced yeah. out. All right, bye, Marnie. That's our cat. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we're all... Even by talking about, like, these reality shows and documentary series and stuff, it's like it, we're all kind of remaining complacent to keep the system intact well it's kind of like i always i always remind myself you have to be mindfully aware of like everything Mm. so you can still kind of you know one of my favorite shows of all time is psychopaths if Mm y'all don't know and that's a (laughs) twisted messed up show in a lot of ways but it's like you don't subscribe to the bad things about it you understand them and you're like okay i'm not wanting to glorify this part of it but it's like educational kind Mm -hmm. of like how also people say Mm -hmm. while we're on an anime conversation attack on Titan is like Nazi propaganda. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit on that wave, but like, as I learned a little bit more about it, at first I was kind of like, Whoa, what? But then when I looked into it, I Mm -hmm. was like, no, it's, it's got these elements of it. Clearly they're using Mm -hmm. that as like a parallel, but Mm -hmm. also the Nazis are the bad guys. Yeah. The Nazi ish people are the bad guys in, Attack on Titan. Mm-hmm. So I don't get why people are calling it fascist, but just because it has it at all, they think it's bad. Right. Well, the the reason why I was skeptical is that the show implies that they deserved it. The the Jews, quote unquote. Right. But those are those characters are technically who we're rooting for, though. Mm-hmm. Right, right. But, but like, yeah, I get, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, because they so, didn't, but like it, they, obviously. they did a thing that caused the retaliation. Mm-hmm. Where, whereas, like in the real world, the Jews didn't actually do anything to deserve that treatment, they just but existed, it, yeah, they, they just existed oh, yeah. and okay. they were hated. I could but that. it's like in the show, they actually did do something and therefore they were treated this way. There's like other things too so where I like think the really, creator showed support for certain Japanese generals in the war or something. And that's Mm. problematic. I don't know, Mm. but it's also like, I mean, Japan in general is problematic. Just acknowledge that to begin with. Yeah. So (laughs) there's a lot of places that are problematic. Where do you want to start? So it's kind of like you have to, you can, at what point it, you know, I think each person is, it's up to them to, obviously there are certain objective wrongs, but then Mm. there's with media and fiction in general, there's Mm. a lot of gray area and, a lot of people can become unhealthy about it. And then a lot mm. of people can still, you know, cause I'm a, you know, I'm a part of like a couple like, you know, Christian theology groups with super mm. in, like people that are really like huge Christians and deep in theology. And they're also some of the biggest horror movie fans I've ever mm. met in my life. And yeah. some, from an outsider view, people would be like, well, those two don't go together. What are you talking about? But they'll be the first ones to tell you, no, I mean, they, you wouldn't think so, but mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm watching horror movies has taught me this or this or this or encourage mm-hmm. my faith in these ways or I just separate myself from this because it's also fictional and mm-hmm. and then this and that. So it's kind of like, that's why I have a problem too with like a lot of religions that like outright ban stuff because mm-hmm. I'm like, you're not allowing your believers and your followers to like think for themselves in that way, like right. even more than what people think. Mm-hmm. And it's damaging because they're going to get out to the point where they're just going to go wild and crazy because they don't have any like like conscious awareness of stuff right right so they're just going to think well everything's all Mm. bad or all good yeah um well and that's how 
I can't remember who the quote is, but I'm pretty sure it's from Chris Ryan quoting someone else. Um, it's like the the things that are most needing change in society are the things that have the most taboo. And so the things where everyone else tells you to stay away from there mm-hmm. is exactly the place where we should be analyzing mm-hmm. and observing. So or that having we can, conversations about yeah, it. Even, yeah, so that we can really see, like, what the actual injustice is. But mm-hmm. it's like – and so people don't like talking about sex and people don't like talking about uh, – their own money Mm -hmm. um and so these are things that we should probably talk about yeah um but we don't because we're scared of the machine i guess yeah i remember there was like um a sermon in life church i forgot exactly what it was but at one point pastor craig was like i'm rich Mm. everyone here is rich and it kind of made people uncomfortable. And it's like, no one likes to say that they have money or that they're rich or that they're okay. Cause it mm-hmm. comes across as bad, but like we're super blessed and lucky in this country in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he's speaking generally, but it, it kind of brought to mind a point that like, it is kind of like a thing of mm-hmm. taboo or something to talk sure. about your money at all in any mm-hmm. case. And it's kind of like that, that always made me think about it and bring to mind. I mean, in a, in a way he was also kind of like encouraging the tithe and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. in general, I thought that thought process was interesting Yeah, because you try, you know, it's like you try and see people like be humble about everything, but then they're not, they're like humble bragging in a weird way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're like either own it or don't, I don't know. If that makes right. Sense. Right. Um, but that is kind of a, a form of like checking your privilege mm-hmm. and just like, yeah, I have a lot of money. This yeah. is something that I should probably interface with the world in a way that I acknowledge that I have a lot of money. Yeah. And kind of like on the opposite end, like Joel Olstein, when right. Houston was going through all the floods and he has the biggest church probably in the United mm-hmm. States. And he was like, no, we're closed. Sorry. Mm-hmm. We're going through problems. And it's like, no, you're not like you're you're mm-hmm. actually fine. Yeah. So why are you acting like all of a sudden you can't help? Welcome to last week's podcast. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, part two. Yeah. <laughs> um i don't know did you have a thought on that for realist back towards media or something i mean just the whole like it it kind of reminded me just not really naming names for safety reasons but like <laughs> the whole yeah. hiding behind religion when you're rich yeah <gasps> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and allowing that to yeah. Is, the, is the mob after you, Sable? I'm just right. kidding. <laughs> 100% people yeah. do that. Yeah. And you can really tell the difference in people um, based on how they act when. And my dad always uh, had this great like way of you don't. What, I'm going to butcher it. But he's basically mm-hmm. saying, you know, if somebody messes up, you don't judge them based on that. You judge them on how they react or respond to it. Mm. And so, you know, if he gets totally screwed over by a company, he'll like sit back but then like if they respond to it really well he's like okay like oh you know you totally messed up my product that i ordered from you Mm -hmm. but they end up like returning it and giving his refund and then giving him something Mm -hmm. you know he's like okay you're great but like if they even if it's like a slight mess up and Mm -hmm. he has an issue with it and they don't do well he'll like call that that's how he kind of judges their character yeah yeah and so in a lot of ways i grew up the same way like you don't really judge it based on the problems going around but on the response to it yeah um so yeah. so we can see the infrastructure of the country about how well it's responding in a crisis exactly it's really it shows not it's the character well mm, not, <laughs> not well in other news i'll have to show you guys later but i came mm. across john krasinski jim from mm. the office has this thing we called watch that today. oh did you watch it, it already is it from yesterday um where he has like hamilton come yes. on yes. yeah i saw that early today and i started crying i'm like i know santiago like, i love him came through in the living room he's like i have something to show you <laughs> it's important <laughs> right and i love that he does that and he's just a wholesome right sweet yeah. man i'll say like what i was telling you i thought that was super super sweet i i do worry though in the back of my mind it kept popping up as mm. we were watching it like John was able to do that for that nine-year-old girl because her mom tweeted like, oh, we missed right. Hamilton. Mm-hmm. So we're watching Return of Mary Poppins, whatever. And then all of that blew up for her. 
Are that, people going to take advantage of it? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm worried about because, like, especially, like, now where it's, like, mm-hmm. try and do something good for each other. But it's, like, the whole, I'm dying of cancer, cough, cough, like, do this for me because I'm dying when they're really not. Yeah. That's, like, the thing that I worry about. Like, people see that and be like, oh, and well, if I tweet something, maybe I'll get that, too. Right. That would suck. And that's when I'm kind of like, mm, karma. But yeah. I also feel like, to an extent, with stuff like that, they mm-hmm. they hopefully fact check things. Mm-hmm. Oh, not yeah. like, you know, go super stalkery deep yeah. dive. Which reminds me of another show I've finished watching mm-hmm. that we can loop back to. <laughs> anyway, they they just research enough to, like no okay you know they're mm-hmm. at least a valid person and you know they were gonna go or whatever yeah but yeah it is kind of like people probably out there would take advantage of it yeah. oh 100 you know? or they just try and mimic it so that they could have that too mm-hmm. you know not saying just with hamilton mo with anybody mm-hmm. i mean it's like that show about the real life story about oh, what's her name the with the um what's it called hmm the mom and she like faked her kids uh diseases yeah uh, we were talking about that it, the show is called the Hel- the the act on hulu but it's based mm. on a real story and i'm forgetting the names of the people and mm. i feel awful um oh, if you can look it up i mean there's lots of like drama movies that yeah are based around that yeah i just notion. feel bad i remember the name of the show but i don't remember but uh yeah she you know she she faked her daughter's illnesses all mm-hmm. her life and got a lot from that and a lot of people were taken advantage of and so yeah. weren't you saying that that one uh she was a youtuber she was european who tried to be like japanese oh that yeah chick? yeah her mom why do i forget names of things whenever i'm fine. like here uh venus angelic that's her name mm-hmm. she was a youtuber or she is a youtuber but her mom kind of put on an act of her as well and kind of took over mm-hmm. her life. And she ended up getting, I think legally emancipated from her um, yeah. and became a totally different person and is a mm-hmm. lot healthier, but it's just sad how it's like, you know, parents take advantage of their kids and they don't know any better because the kids don't know any better yeah. because they trust their parent. Child mm-hmm. actors. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically. Yeah. It's like at some point your kid's doing it to make you happy. And so then at what point mm-hmm. do you call it off if they don't want to, mm-hmm. Yeah. you know, like you should call it off if they're like, mm-hmm. I don't want to do this anymore. But a lot of them yeah. convince them otherwise. Mm-hmm. That Black Mirror episode. I need to watch more Black Mirror. <laughs> Maybe that will go on my to-do list of shows I need to binge. I, I, I don't know. Maybe not binge that one. Yeah, because... <laughs> that that could get dark yeah. real fast. Like, we're all re- like, the real world is pretty Black Mirror as it is. It is. If you're day, not in yeah. a good place, just... Put that one in the back burner for a while. <laughs> maybe I, maybe once things are like going all right and the world doesn't feel as similar to Black Mirror. And you're like, wow, I, I miss those times when the world felt like Black Mirror. Let's let's watch yeah, Black let's, Mirror. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I mean, I deactivated my Facebook and took Twitter off my phone mm-hmm. just to get away from like the constant news cycle about everything. And that's mm-hmm. helped some. But, yeah. you know, it's still everywhere. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Twitter's a trash fire. Yeah, so. Twitter is a trash fire. <laughs> Facebook is also Which a trash there, fire. Uh, one of my online friends pointed out, this is not important, but one of my <laughs> online friends pointed out to me that he he sent it to me. And there's an artist who claims to be a graphic designer and illustrator named Megan that tried to take my exact Twitter handle. But since I took it before her, she mm-hmm. had to take out the E in Meg. So it just says Mgstick or whatever. Yeah. It doesn't make sense at all. Oh, um, no. And it's funny because she actually has more followers, but I took the, the handle first. And yeah. so he was just laughing about that. Anyway, that's nice. not that important. But. Maybe she'll like, hey, can I have your Twitter handle for like $3,000? I'd be like, like sure, I'll buy it. <laughs> Hell yeah. With that. Okay, bye. Um, um, I'm not that <laughs> married to it. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll if I have a sizable amount of wasteable money, I would try and get like just at Santiago. Right. <laughs> that would be really just the first name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just at That's Santiago. That's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm the Santiago. Mm-hmm. That would be the sh- only one. Yeah. Yeah. But like I don't you know. Just who, got I don't at, know who has that. At Ramona's, but everyone thinks you're just the band. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't <laughs> no, besides true. there's uh I mean I have two older brothers and right yeah that's true santiago would be better i don't even like the ramones that much like i feel i'm required to know a little bit about They'd the band like, oh, like the band right You're yeah like, yeah like, yes. uh, i know that's what I mean, I the eat. band shirts are cute though yeah. like you got one or whatever mm-hmm. so cute i can't wear it but yes <laughs> oh. <laughs> why it's too small oh <laughs> that's okay but no i was telling santiago i was like i actually really want to like 
take the the Ramones like logo, but like alter it enough that it it fits for the Ramones. That'd be cute somehow. Yeah, like I have a few ideas in my head on how I want to <laughs> like do those it. faux shirts that like Christian stores sell, where it's like trying to make you know trying to make anything you know like starbucks but it's like yeah got like a cross in it and it's like yeah or the, know, the the one or whatever the fakes know. that you see like the kiosk like yes. off-brand shirts yes like those yes. my one of my old managers hated those shirts because he was <laughs> like we are not designing our stuff like that like because for a while like a lot of our buyers were like yeah you should buy them like this and he's like no the <laughs> one i always list if you want that right the only <laughs> the one i remember the most is like it was when Twilight was popular, uh-huh. and so they had, like, the Twilight font and everything, but instead of Twilight, it said The Light, and then, like, a Bible verse underneath it, yeah. but it looked like Twilight, and so when I saw it, I was horrified. I was, I think I saw it at Falls Creek. Oh, man. And yeah. There's mm-hmm. a church that does Never went back. <laughs> that kind of stuff here. It's the one off of Expressway heading towards, it's past council. I don't know which church it is, but they always have, is like, like a- the big one. It's like, yeah, it's kind of big. It's not like Crossings, is it? No, it's okay. not that one. That one's huge. No, <laughs> it's another one where they always have like some sort of a banner out and they always do like a play on words with like I think movies. I know. Which, I think I know what you're talking about. They did a Toy Story one and the yep. font was almost identical. Yep. I hate like, it. I hate it. For some reason, you know, churches and Christian companies, they're like, the only way people are going to pay attention to us is if we have mediocre design that rips off something else. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? That's not true. If you actually had good design, people would notice you more. Right. You know, so. Yeah. Stop it with the parody shirts. <laughs> also, apparently the Toy Story font was used on a, like Little Debbie's like box. Ooh, for something. Did Disney come after Little Debbie? Is <laughs> I don't, Little Debbie I don't, dead somewhere? Right. I little Deddy? <laughs> little Deddy. <laughs> little nice. Deddy. Thanks. Nice. I, I'll take over your job as the pun master. I'm just That's kidding. Fine, yeah. <laughs> but no, I just saw that and I was like, mm, that looks suspiciously familiar. Mm-hmm. I love, I love it. You mm-hmm. stopped sending me the bad boy uh, bootleg stuff and it right, makes me well, sad. I've, I've, <laughs> well, because similarly, I've also... Just stayed stopped. off of things yeah. yeah that's fair like why isn't there not like a a you safe place lurk. for memes you can just lurk reddit <laughs> oh i don't no. like that's dangerous i don't that want to lurk dangerous. reddit r slash memes i guess subreddits are fine because yeah. they have to stay in uh yeah. topic so, yeah, words yeah, yeah, yeah. dead air i'm sorry yeah, there's there's uh <laughs> moderators and such mods yeah <laughs> yeah reddit kind of scares me though so that's fine <sighs> It's it's stuff can blow up on there though, so I've been tempted to like oh like share my art or something, right, right. but then it's, I also don't want it to get stolen from there. No, so but like, it's it's four chan for normal people. <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's funny how often I'll see people I consider normies be like, oh, I saw it on Reddit, and I'm like, but I guess it's you know there's a lot of yeah, well you different can go threads into there whatever, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Unlike four chan, which is just which is dangerous, the, the deep dark pit. Of yeah, the no internet. one no one talks about that or no goes it's there. The deep dark pit of our internet. Yeah. Like normie internet. Yeah. There's a whole nother dark internet. That's for yeah, sure. That's, mm. Yeah. Uh, One of the seven <laughs> rings of hell. Mm. Yeah. Nine rings, seven rings, something like that. Uh, I think it's sep- I think it's nine. <laughs> something like that. I think it's nine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's nine. If not, we're adding more every day anyway. So. Right. You know, that's by fine. now it's like 15. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we're already there. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like this is right now this is 15 Oof. Yeah. coronavirus mm. uh since we are talking about media and thinking of the like whole christian bleeding into it just just as a thought because i want your opinion on it how do you feel about those like those movies that pure flex yeah huh. yeah <laughs> i hate them i hate them you know why okay listen it's because everything in it is so stereotypical cliche and downright like insulting in a way and it's like they always paint characters to be a certain way like all the christiany characters are like good and great and quirky and whatever and humble and then they have like you know the atheist characters or non-believing characters whatever be painted a certain way and then it's like it's, you know, they try and do the whole like salvation thing at the end and they force it in really dramatic ways and yeah. they make it sound like, oh, you know, your whole Christian walk can start and end in mm-hmm. a month or two or a year. Yeah. And they don't realize it's like a lifelong thing with seasons and ups and downs and that not all Christians are great. Mm-hmm. And so it, it 
I've never seen one of those movies that felt realistic. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, I kind of fell into them because it was like very emotionally they can they yeah, they ma manipulate you they manipulate you emotionally especially as a christian like religion in general sorry uh <laughs> i mean yeah i don't really disagree with you there uh a lot of places do that i mean i believe like i mean i'm in like a weird place right now where i don't have like a church i go to mm. still hold to my faith but yeah. like i under i think i've become aware of like the emotional manipulation right. about things and so that makes it kind of daunting and so anytime i see like a pure flicks thing come up i'm like mm -hmm. what is this okay it's like the same wonder bread <laughs> version of a movie yeah, yeah, yeah. and so i'm like i don't want it <laughs> it's it's so bad like i don't know why they don't see it mm. like i don't know why they don't make just make better content right to spread your message but those are the same eyes that are seeing like hey instead of twilight we'll say the light yeah and it's the same <laughs> eyes that don't really view the world realistically either yeah mm -hmm. like it, that's kind of what bothers me as well. They want to stay in their little bubble mm -hmm. and they don't realize that's not how it works. And so if you really want to spread your message to people, you just have to have conversations and you have to make it realistic, believable media that yeah. people would go out and want to see anyway. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, a lot of people within the circle I kind of fall into now, they honestly find sometimes more Christian values and messages through what, people call secular media. Mm -hmm. And that is interesting to me because like a lot of times I agree with them. I'm like a pure flicks film is so boring and generic, but I can yeah. watch, I don't know, like, like they said, horror films or mm -hmm. whatever. A lot of those are sometimes made by Christian or Catholic, whatever directors. Mm -hmm. And it's because of that, you kind of, you, but they don't make that the primary message that mm -hmm. their message almost comes out more. That makes yeah. sense because yeah. you're not manipulated mm -hmm. by it. Which makes discussing them way more interesting. Yeah. So. Listen to Soup and Stevens. Yeah. <laughs> He's a very Christian, like, musician, but he mm. doesn't make Christian music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I one of my favorite podcasts is Popcorn Theology, and they do movie reviews. They they don't touch a Pure Flix movie. They hate those movies. Yeah. They all talk about, like, anything, and they'll bring on guests to talk about stuff, mm -hmm. too. Like, if one of them doesn't like horror movies just for whatever reason, they'll bring on someone that does. Mm -hmm. So it's... And that's what made me really fascinated and kind of what pulled me out of the really bubble I was in with... Yeah, yeah. When I first began as a Christian, like... Right, well, and those are also trying to, like, pat yourself on the back because it's like, hey, look, I'm a Christian. We and saved I get, the guy. Yeah, we, yeah. It's like... OK, <laughs> but like, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think of, you know, they talked about like The Witch, which is like a crazy horror yeah. movie. Right. And a lot of Christians were trying to boycott that movie because they're like, it's showing evil things. And that's exactly why I should watch it. Yeah, but they <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because, you know, and, you know, OK, argue, arguing that mm. if you genuinely feel uncomfortable don't make yourself watch something that's mm. unnecessary. But mm. like, if you're like, okay, no, I can do this. Cause I don't feel like I could have watched it just cause it, I don't like horror movies mm. as much. It depends on what they are, but I read all about it's it. It's pretty mild. I read all about it and I was like, oh, okay. Mm. I probably could have watched it, but you know, they had a really great theological conversation about mm. it. And I was like, oh, I learned so much through that more yeah. than I would have learned through, I don't know, some pure flicks film. I couldn't right, even right. think of it. What's the one where the girl goes to trial for her? I don't know. They're all the same. They all go to trial know, for their faith garbage. and they're the best people. So it's, <laughs> it's annoying. Right. Um, uh, I would even say that the Vivich is like, the Vivich. that's how it's spelled. I know. Uh, <laughs> they try and be like, artsy with it. I think it was made for Christian people. Mm -hmm. Cause like you wouldn't get all of the references or even the, like, I mean, I'll call it mythology, but like, that surrounds the notion of like, oh, this is what our faith teaches us is Being like the devil is your, trying yeah. to like make his way into your family and stuff. And like that's the witch is really good about like tackling all of those insecurities that are instilled in the, again, mythology of the faith. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what it's playing on. And so that's actually who it's for mm -hmm. because anyone else who is secular and didn't grow up with that wouldn't get all those references. I mean, they can like this pop, the popcorn theology podcast, like they took wreck it Ralph and they made it like super yeah, yeah, yeah. well-grounded, like theological th whole message about identity. Mm -hmm. And they could pull all that from it. That's not what wreck it Ralph's trying to say, mm -hmm. but like 
they can it almost a it, what... it's just a good right not mm-hmm. a theological way i mean right, right, like right. a christian way or whatever mm-hmm. but like they can it's such a it's just a good story mm. and so they can pull any they can it, they can relate to it in a way that means more to them because it's just a well-told story mm-hmm. and not enough media is focusing on that nowadays i feel mm-hmm. like yeah not to sound cliche mm-hmm. but <laughs> That's why a lot of the best media people really come back to every time mm. is because it's just a good story. Yeah. People need to focus on that more. Right. And the other part is that, like, a good story doesn't necessarily require you to feel good. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you can that's come back I, from it like, oh, gosh. That's why I enjoy Black Mirror so much. That's why I really enjoyed, and I'm not really into horror movies, but, like, I really enjoyed both Hereditary and Midsummer. Um, oh yeah i read all about midsummer and followed like videos about that Ooh, yeah and it's like i didn't watch it but i basically did (laughs) uh it's rough i mean it's it's a really good film Mm -hmm. and it doesn't they don't make you feel good like you don't watch black mirror and you're like oh boy i feel great about the universe unless you need to bring yourself down a Um, (laughs) pound i've been too optimistic lately (laughs) Sure, I mean, I guess. Um, Or it's like, I've been on my phone for 48 hours straight. I'll watch some Black Mirror and give myself some reason to throw it across the room. That's Uh, fair, yeah. um, But, like, yeah, not all media has to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. Um, And, I mean, uh, especially, like, uh, The Last of Us is one of the more like best made game stories in the past decade and nobody feels good in that story there's no there's no like pure people in mm-hmm. it either um so i mean, I mean there's realistic characters and realistic yeah, believing like the situations? real world what yeah you know, like, you know, Kingdom Hearts, they they also don't feel good after that. But that's because no one understands it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fine. They'll feel good in like a weird way, but then like it's like a surface level way. But then afterwards, they're like, what? That didn't make any sense. <laughs> so you can basically say they're the same game. Mm. Just one has Disney characters. I'm kidding. It. It's fine. I mean. The can... Last of Us is the one with the Disney characters. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kingdom Hearts and zombies. Can't oh, wait God. to go back Just to see Disneyland. Goofy coming at you, zombie form. Oh my God, that's probably somewhere. I need probably. that mod though. I mean, maybe in like Kingdom Hearts five point eight, we'll get it. Yeah, zombies. A, I mean, they're making. I can't more. wait to. Well, there's Halloween Town, meet right? Joel in. They're like cute Disneyland. Oh, wow, true. <laughs> yeah. No. It's like. Oh, hey, it's Joel. Yeah, he's and like a like this, summon weird, character. Like, yeah. Oh. Do you not know that? You press triangle enough times, he'll pop up and help no, you. No, no, Joel is, is the... Oh, uh, you're talking about... No, Joel is Still the, tying like, it in with Kingdom dude. Hearts. Yeah, 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 Tying it in, tying threads. Yes, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, but I mean, you know, some kid... <laughs> That reminded me... <laughs> Sorry. That Go reminded ahead. me of the thing that you shared about like, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of Cloud for finally getting his own game. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god! I, I'm pretty sure it's, that's it's intentionally bait, insane. But like, I'm scary. also like in the state of mind and the world now. I'm like, I believe anything. You know, right. there are people out there that have don't know the game from scratch. They don't. They don't know Final Fantasy VII, so they're probably like, Oh wow, okay, I'm so proud cool. of you. Yeah, can't wait for Squall to have his own. I'm like, <laughs> like okay, well, just, well, it's okay. They don't have to play it. It's fine. Right. We'll leave them out. <laughs> <laughs> they can believe what they want to believe. I know. It was just oh. great. Yeah. Never underestimate. The power of stupidity. The, like, yeah, people's capability to be stupid. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember I remember when we worked at Vintage Stock, I'm pretty sure there was a moment where this dad was buying his, like, daughter. And she was little, probably, like, under 10 years old, right? And she was wanting to buy a Smurfs plush. And I was <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, it's the Smurfs. I remember watching that when I was your age. And she just gave me this look like they're new i'm like you're like listen kid excuse me <laughs> i've been around <laughs> right like you, you want me to ruin know. some more things for you <laughs> my <laughs> little pony ain't unique either <laughs> nope exactly <laughs> any everything in your life right now is probably a rehash of something else mm-hmm. have a good day <laughs> just give him the smurf and let him leave make the daughter cry <laughs> right you know that's, that's our fine. job that's fine. that was our job at vintage stock make kids cry right yeah is there any like i mean i don't know the 
what are the original things in life now that we can appreciate rather than having to try and <laughs> like things that are being remade? No, or things that are original that are nowadays. new to know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that are new to know. Yeah. So like something like Hereditary and Midsummer are like, hey, look, these I mean, are horror movies that saying, don't have 12 sequels. They're saying we're in like a renaissance of horror movies. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We so are. those probably those movies like Get Out and stuff like get that, out, like nice. Us, yeah. those are probably mm-hmm. all I would say they are mm-hmm. cuz th- they're refreshing to me even if I don't watch them cuz I'm a baby. I appreciate mm-hmm. them <laughs> for what they're doing cuz I, I I know they're is she trying to get in the room again? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. She's like, just laying hearing? on the floor and like getting under it with her paw. She loves, so that's our laundry room <laughs> and we keep her out of it because there's weird holes that are in the wall that probably go underneath. You never, you'll never see her again. Right. So right. We just keep, don't want her to get into some stuff. But yeah. you'll like hear a noise in the wall and then realize she's like in the wall. Oh God. That would be great. <laughs> Kill all the ants, Marnie. I guess I could say stuff like Steven Universe comes to mind. Mm-hmm. as like yeah. a truly, purely original Oh, yeah. Cartoon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if like, like Avatar would count, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a. Not uh, in the decade, but sure. Not in the decade. <laughs> yeah. I guess there's something like my life, my lifetime, but mm-hmm. um, it's getting to the point where they made, they remade a movie and they're trying to remake a Netflix show. So maybe it doesn't count because mm-hmm. Steven Universe has just ended. So it's like fresh enough that yeah, yeah. they haven't made yeah. anything yet. Did it end then? Yeah. It, it officially ended. 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 Yeah. yeah. I haven't caught up. I want to, but like that's what I saw on Instagram was yeah, yeah. just oh, it's over. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Things to need to end. They should. They yeah, to. they they need to end <laughs> if they if ended on a good note, like how Avatar did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We kind of touched base about that, like knowing when to end something versus mm-hmm. letting it go for too long. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. no offense, but SpongeBob probably should have ended a long time ago. <laughs> Fairly yeah. off parents. Fairly off parents. See, even if they're like super short, like episodic little things, like it's still just once the humor kind of starts to mm-hmm. change, you're like, uh, mm-hmm. you're, you're well, risking even, it. Honestly, like we're excited to watch last season of Good Place. Yeah. But honestly, I feel like they could have just done two seasons and like tackled some mm-hmm. of the stuff that they tackled in like season three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the earlier seasons and I would have been fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, again, that's what I was saying. Like, it's really good, but there are so many moments where I'm like, I feel like they're backtracking or it doesn't really make sense. Like, or they wrote themselves into a corner and then. Yeah. They had to, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's. Yeah. <laughs> that's why, like, I don't know why people don't just make a whole story first. It drives then, me, Cause yeah. you can tell, you can tell like mm-hmm. that it's not gonna go well if they start like you know that's how it was like i love once upon a time Mm -hmm. and that show just hmm, went crazy like i didn't finish it but they started bringing up amnesia resurrection that means you've written yourself into a corner and so you can't just think you'll get away with that and then and yeah you know blind us with a new disney character if i haven't said this enough on the podcast yet i hate amnesia yeah. Stop mm-hmm. using it. I don't as know a plot if device. I've ever seen it done well. I'd love to be proven wrong. Um, only when it is foundational to the yes. story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's fair. So I read a book last year. Um, Octavia Butler it was called Fledgling, um, mm. which Octavia Butler is great. She's like one of the one of the authors kind of foundational in the maybe not foundational, but uh, in the Afrofuturism genre, which is super cool. Um, but Fledgling is about is uh, it a young adult. Hmm? Is it a young adult novel or is it? No. Adult novel? Uh, <laughs> anyway, I mean, that doesn't matter. Right. right, right. But. Um, but it's about like a girl who wakes up doesn't know anything and like has memory loss and uh discovers that she is a vampire and like kind of gets introduced to like that world and her amnesia allows her to like have the world be new to us as it's new to her Hmm. i could see that Um, working yeah in the same way that, like, Harry Potter is, like, 
it's fine that Harry's like, I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, you're new to this world. And so we're all, we're introducing you to things that are normal to everyone else, but are new to you. And so it's effective because you can introduce weird stuff that the main character doesn't know about. Yeah. And it's fine. Yeah. Because we also don't know about it. Right. That's how you can use amnesia effectively, but you have to make it from the get go or memento. Go ahead. Didn't they <laughs> didn't they use that kind of plot for the latest Blade Runner? The new one? No, that no? wasn't. I thought he like had some sort of weird amnesia from no. the get go. Who, Harrison Ford? Uh no, oh. it's the the brand brand new one that came out Ryan a couple Because yeah. Harrison Ford's in the new one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He shows up, yeah. Because he was in the original. Right. Which by the way, one of the best sequels. I do made. want to see those. I want to see both in a row. Mm -hmm. um, I need to watch them. Did you see the first one? Yeah. Okay. I haven't seen the first one, <laughs> but we saw the new one. Right. Well, I watched the Jared second Leto's one with one, you. Right? Uh, Jared Leto's in the second one, I think. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I watched the second one with you, and I had read the book. Mm. And then after watching the second, do Android one, I watched, stream of Electric Sheep? Yeah. Do yeah. Android stream of Electric Sheep, which is very <laughs> different from it Blade is because I started okay. Mm -hmm. I'm so far into psychopaths and my love for it that I wanted mm -hmm. to read all the literature that's the referenced in it. And so I was, and I was like, Oh, and I know it's based on Blade Runner. And so I'll like read the book and then watch the movies. The book is like, I didn't, I need to finish it, but it's, it's pretty quaint. really different. It is yeah. kind of quaint, more quaint than I thought, especially <laughs> yeah. for how often they quote it in that show, but that's not quaint. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I think they quote it in the show a lot because Blade Runner, like, it's psychopaths, psychopaths is more based, is on, Blade more based Runner. on Blade Runner. Yeah. Mm. Like in a lot of ways, even down to like the detectiveiness. Yeah. 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 But it's not uh, nerdy enough to reference a movie. So they reference a book. Yeah. It's like, oh no, it's our characters are, are literate. They're not <laughs> movie cinephiles. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, they I read mean, books because they're deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, there are ways of using amnesia effectively if you just start yeah. with it yeah like the whole point of memento was mm -hmm. like yes he doesn't remember things this is where and we're you're beginning. learning it like in reverse yeah. yeah which is that's fascinating but if you're like i went through this whole story and now there's amnesia in the middle of it now you have to convince us that mm -hmm. not only they actually have an amnesia but like why it matters other mm -hmm. than to rewrite things you can't get yourself out of right cora yeah yeah <laughs> yes yes that was exactly dumb. yeah <laughs> That was so oh dumb. Another plot point that I hate, uh, mm. speaking of <laughs> amnesia, uh, because of Gravity Falls, I hate mm. it whenever the stakes are super high. Mm, yeah. And then immediately don't matter. Yeah. Yep. Um, are you saying Gravity Falls did that or? Yes. At the end. That is oh. like. You haven't gotten to the end yet, though. No. That okay. is literally my only disappointment mm. with Gravity Falls. Like, yeah. Everything in Gravity Falls is wonderful. Yeah. My only disappointment is that. It's like they think they can't handle high stakes. Yeah. But like or actually. That there are consequences and that we just have to like as an audience deal with them. That that kind of plot seems to be happening a lot lately in a lot of film. Avengers and game. That Star Wars. We rewatch Frozen yeah. 2 mm -hmm. and that is like everywhere in that one yeah. as well with Elsa. Like, I, I like yeah. Frozen 2 way more than the first one. Yeah. But Elsa still shuts everyone out when you really sit back and think about it. <laughs> it's because it's like, oh, well, she's truly accepted herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. And then, I mean, it, and then it justifies her shutting everyone out. You mean it's by like, her oh, look, going you're, Yeah, you're the, a... the special, you're the avatar. And so <laughs> you get to but the live avatar off advice. by yourself but and she's shut not, everyone yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, she's... Out. I, I disagree with the shutting everyone out because I guess, you know, she's literally going back to her, like, Anna and her family to, like, go play what whatever. Yeah, every once in a while. Reads. Yeah. I but mean, the rest of fair. the time, she just. It's I mean, Elsa is like their their pride and joy right now. It's like Disney's mm -hmm. golden child. So they're going to, like, let her get away with anything. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like uh, breaking all of her promises that she made in the first movie and in the second movie and just doing the thing that she was going to do anyway. Yeah. I mean. So, like, kind of going on that for a moment, like, because <laughs> it's fresh in my mind. Like, yes, only Elsa really could have gotten to at the Holland and everything. It makes sense. 
because like cinema sins or cinema wins pointed out like really she's the only one that could have done any of that anyway she's meant to be she's like a avatar. spirit yeah. yeah yeah it's like the avatar is the only one that can go to the spirit world yeah well rip, like literally when she gets there everything's in ice so she's able to move it because she has ice she powers that's true yeah so <laughs> even if somebody could even, get there yeah they like, have to have ice powers yeah it's, it's what it makes me think of um Whenever I play like platforming games, yeah. Um, so the best example is uh, Prince of Persia, is my favorite because it's like every single environment mm -hmm. was designed to be traversed, yeah. Um, but like also every single environment, the only way is this path of platforming, mm -hmm. and so it's like only the prince could get through here. Because he can run on walls and jump on ledges and jump back and forth between walls that are close enough and do like this wall thing mm -hmm. where you like. So it's like how convenient mm -hmm. that all of the characters abilities are made so that they can approach this situation specifically. And I think a lot of it <laughs> and I think I'm forgiving of Frozen too because it's like a good character arc for her. But mm -hmm. a lot of it was probably aesthetics too. Oh like, yeah. Oh ice. And then oh, you know, you finally found this place that's like all for you because it's all ice and that was why. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean it those movies are basically her movies. Oh hundred percent. I mean, right. But which but I think Honest still has like a good ground in there she has her own story about dealing with like loss and she's a good counterbalance and, yeah like elsa's out there discovering herself and going crazy and having great and then anna's having all these doubts and like mm -hmm. literally in a cave in the darkness but still <laughs> moving on like one of my online friends mentioned how much she loved her in that movie because she really signified like shows like soldiering through like mental health and like mm -hmm. loss grief like she can represent like a lot of things in that especially in that specific scene about oh, the yeah. next right yeah. thing and still doing what she knows she needs to do mm -hmm. um and everything and so i think her role is still really strong even though for sure elsa is like mm -hmm. yeah everyone's and then they favorite threw that all away because it's yes the next right thing is destroying the dam and flooding yeah our city and you you wanted the city to flood yeah the, yeah yeah, yeah. It, like the, i can see why it there. why would you introduce this risk if it wasn't actually a risk yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> that's also because it's probably a kids movie yeah they don't want well, to give this is coming from the same company that literally made us all watch mufasa die but he comes back in ways like <laughs> yeah. spiritually so it's like yeah he's gone but mm -hmm. yeah disney's but, put like, us through some stuff I don't know. okay like, yeah don't maybe don't baby the audience yeah like i think i think we can handle it i mm -hmm. think kids can handle it mm -hmm. oh 100 kids because can handle kids it kids in japan watch ghibli movies mm -hmm. oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yeah those will grave of fireflies yeah oh my god yeah you're right mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot of it has to do with they want it to be happy and you know well anna had to be queen mm -hmm. frozen two spoilers by the way i don't know why mm -hmm. you know, anyway mm -hmm. she had to be queen yeah but like you know why couldn't you know maybe and i think they were trying to do the whole like also tell the message hello oh, thanks, thanks for that they're like hey you're doing a podcast here's yeah. a honk um they're, they're doing the whole like the whole concept of bridges. And so like Anna was representing one side and mm -hmm. Elsa was representing the other. So they wanted to keep a land mm -hmm. for Anna to be on and keep a land for Elsa to be on. Mm -hmm. And they're the Brit and there's a Brit, but there's always that's bridges why, that connect that's why us. I keep saying the avatar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. But like, yeah. so like Elsa's a bridge, but then, you know, the, there's bridges have two sides. And like, I liked that continuity enough that I was able to forgive them for yeah. her saving right. it at the end. But wouldn't it have meant more? If like, oh, Anna, you get to be queen now. The town is destroyed. You get to take part in rebuilding it. Mm -hmm. So that like yeah. we all feel that together and that, hey. We can truly we, trust we you can, as a queen. Yeah, we yeah. can. And we can get through this together. Mm -hmm. Also, it's like <laughs> they already like had all the townspeople out of there anyway. Yeah. It's like. No one would have died. Yeah. No one would have died. Yeah. Or Which they, is what the spirits wanted in the first place. Right. Or, like, what they could have done was the big thing, like, oh, it actually, like, destroyed the town. We thought, like, people were still there. And then turns out everyone was okay. 
Yeah. Like that whole like kind of shock factor. Right. Like, oh my God, did been. everyone die? And then, so there are stakes, but then you're like, wait, no, they're okay. It's just like mm -hmm. their home was destroyed, but like yeah, your home when you're with your, yeah. Yeah. They could have spun that a lot of different ways. It is a hundred percent them babying it. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of parents too, when they take their kids to stuff, they're protective of their kids. And so they're like, mm -hmm. why did Disney end it so sad? Like, oh, my kid's so sad now. But Mm -hmm. yet again it's like no you could take this opportunity to have a conversation with your kids about yeah. grief or loss or I mean, and how much how more impactful would that have been be a parent <laughs> right how much more impactful would that have been than <laughs> oh yay elsa and anna are really pretty again and i want their doll yeah. like oh well, yeah, yeah. I mean. that does kind of remind me um i think like some actresses are definitely like against like having Especially their daughters watch Disney. Yeah, I saw that. Natalie Portman's one of them. They're yeah. Like, oh my gosh. She, <laughs> Little Mermaid literally gives up her voice for a man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, because they don't want to have to try and explain that to like their six year old or little, something. Little kids Which, watching Little Mermaid aren't going to think of it like that, though. <laughs> Look at us. We grew up with that stuff. Yeah. It's like, we're fine. For the most I don't part. know. I mean, like, <laughs> parents going to parent for the most part. We're all broken. <laughs> Parents for the parents are gonna parent for the most part. Mm. Whatever. I'm not a parent yet. I don't know mm. how. Apparently. Uh, apparently. <laughs> nice. That was a really loud. Yeah, my, my shoulder hit the mic and everything. <laughs> anyway, so I don't want to tell someone how to parent, but I think it's stupid. I'm like, yet again, I go back to everything can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Fictional media. You, you you approach it with your own conscience, and so if you're worried about your kid doing that maybe you just like let them watch it and you talk about it afterwards mm -hmm. and then they probably you'll probably realize 90 percent of the time they're not going to get this super deep message like you are mm -mm. but instead you can use this moment to be like oh you know what we like about ariel is her free spirit and going after what she wants and this and that and you yeah. know she's still tied with her family and yeah. but she pursued what she wanted you know that can relate right. in a way as well yeah i didn't start like really understanding media until like my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. I was way later than that. Like I like probably out. out <laughs> I really started looking at media in that way at, with popcorn theology, mm. whether it was the theological or not, it mm. made me realize, Oh, medias can be deeper. Mm -hmm. Right. It more interesting. Otherwise I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. And so it was like the entire rest of the time. I was like, this looks cool. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I think subconsciously we're like, we're getting the message of, Oh, this is what this is saying. This is what this means. Um, People can use anything hmm. and to put their own right. message to it too. Right, but like, no one, no one really no. is paying attention. It, it's based <laughs> on, for first of all, like Little Mermaid. It's based off of is it? It's Hans Christian Andersen, right? Yeah, that was one of his tales, and so it was Frozen. Yeah, yeah. so it's frozen. And so they're literally just like, we're going to tell a story. We're going to retell the story. Mm -hmm. They're not like, you know what? Let's get political. <laughs> Girls, you got to give up your voice for a man. Right, and, right. you know, no one, I even mean, if that's the message you get from it, great. Take mm -hmm. that and run with it. I don't care. But like, you can't say that that's what the message is. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the it's, Disney version is a lot happier. <laughs> yeah, the also. Disney version is a lot happier. Yeah. Um, uh, It's just funny how people, they'll rip apart anything mm -hmm. or use it for mm. their own gain i still kind of find it funny because like mentioning all that like you know we grew up with like the renaissance of disney and stuff like that but i still remember and i think i've pointed this out in an older episode on the podcast but like powerpuff girls had literally a devil as a villain him they had yeah. him had who which was... is an acronym for his infernal majesty yeah, yeah. <laughs> um also, he was, like, hella gay at the same time. Yeah. But then, literally, there was another, like, cartoon, Cow and Chicken, if you... Did you ever watch that one? I don't think I did. It was stupid. Like, beyond stupid. 90s Liter cartoons were edgy. Oh, they oh, were. Oh, like, Rocco's Modern Life, when, like... Mm-hmm. Uh, what's his cow's friend name? What's is it? Heifer? Heifer. Heifer. I was about yeah. to say that. I'm like, is that right? No. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Heifer. He, like, dies and goes to hell. Yeah. Because like, he, like, choked on something. I'm like, wow. Mm. Yeah. That happened. No, literally in Cow and Chicken, they always intermingle with the devil. Mm -hmm. Right. And, like, he's just literally butt-ass naked. And it's like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, Ren and Stimpy, obviously. Oh, if yeah. that was even ever really for kids. No. No. Uh, <laughs> But also the show's creator was a pedophile. So, yay. <laughs> Big oof. Big yeah. oof. But, like, I don't, I feel like I don't hear people critique those. 
kind of things, you right. know, nearly as much, or maybe I just don't listen to the right people. But like, I'll hear more people complain about like, you know, the Disney princesses and like not wanting their kids to like mm-hmm. relate to that or something when it's like, but there there's are also, like far like, worse stuff. I don't want to get like too deep here, but I'm going to go for it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm Whose trying to, I'm, I'm like, are you on? no, I know. I'm, but I'm like forming <laughs> the thought as I think about it. Go for do it. Do you think it's because it's like, it has to do with, yeah, yeah. If, if it has to do with the whole, like, I'm mainly saying, cause I don't, I'm not like crazy, crazy <laughs> kill the patriarchy, but in a way this kind of shows how they're, they're critiquing those shows or those Disney movies or whatever, because they're, they're for women and for mm-hmm. girls. And so I feel like in a way they want to control more what they, right, well, you know what I'm saying? I think, I you think know I'm getting it's, with this? it's the type of people that want that kind of media and then like i don't know a mom that would let her kids watch powerpuff girls instead of little mermaid mm-hmm. wouldn't couldn't you say yeah wouldn't really mind either way yeah uh but a mom that's like oh no don't watch this watch little mermaid wait she's giving up her voice for the thing uh i need to speak to the manager what do you let them watch yeah then? like okay karen <laughs> yeah because yeah. it, it's because you know i feel like ren and stimpy was more maybe a target audience for you know young adults. boys and adults or yeah. whatever but you know disney movies with princesses for sure their base target audience is mm. younger girls and so mm-hmm. i feel like people are way more protective because they feel like younger girls need to turn out a certain way or mm. whether that's for one side or the other and so that's why they get like hyper focused on that yeah you know like well, you can't give up your voice for a man or right. but they're but they're not the type of people that would allow their kids to watch other media anyway yeah yeah and so the the media that they are allowing their kids to watch is the one that they're criticizing. It's just mm-hmm. so much better to just let them kind of, you know, within reason, let them watch stuff and then just talk to them about it. Cause mm-hmm. like kids aren't as dumb as people think they are. Like they'll pick up on things mm-hmm. and they'll remember, they'll, they'll start to really grow and learn a lot about themselves at those ages. Mm-hmm. That's why the conversations are very vital, but mm-hmm. a lot of parents just try and restrict everything and, and think that's the answer. Um, all right. So let's go this way then. <laughs> Megan, plug your stuff. What do you got going on? Uh, I mean, nothing, but like nothing, plug your stuff. right? <laughs> uh, I guess I'm trying to do art more. So if you want to follow me or anything, get on that grind. It's, get on the hustle. <laughs> it's at underscore Meg Stetic, which is M E G S T H E T I C, like aesthetic, but like Meg. Yes. <laughs> Because I took it from that person who wanted it. Yeah. They had to take their you hustled around. before I they hustled did. before they hustled. That's basically it. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, check that out. Megan does good art. I do art sometimes. Do so art. Does social media. My wife. Oh my gosh. My wife. You can always find my stuff at sableann.com. That is my website where you can find my online portfolio of graphic design, illustrations, all that fun stuff. Um, I'm mainly on Instagram at sableann underscore creation creations i like mm-hmm. hesitated on That's that okay. for a second i got creations. You. Um, creations well i thought illustrations i was like wait um those I, are also there it's okay i forgot <laughs> how to spell mine so it's fine <laughs> um i'm gonna start promoting this a lot more now because i need to anyway um also on my website there's a link you can buy my first children's book buy our book it's cute oh, yeah. we're all it's stuck true. inside give your kids something new give to read. read please please it's buy cute. it it's cute. It's called Susie Blue. I love her. <laughs> cute Sable, blue Sable is also my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Santiago. I thought Sorry, you were, Ethan. I thought you were talking crap about polyamorous people. <laughs> the, polygamous, for sure, okay. is a cult. Or polygamy, sure. Polygamy. Yeah, yeah you said polygamy. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Polyamorous people. I have seven soulmates, and they're all my friends. <laughs> Neat. Um, we're all gay for <laughs> each other. Back. Neat. <laughs> yes. Um, we're all in a giant we're all in, yeah uh what was what was i gonna plug oh yeah that's what i was plug your plug. stuff plug yeah. your giant harem right um <laughs> well sure okay I'll, I'll plug the giant harem which is uh at solstice underscore cosplay um, on instagram that is a good question there's no way to find out solstice cosplay is our harem name um, <laughs> yes. i'm like i don't run it that's a, that's a naughty uh, thing 
so strike. I am an solstice admin on the Facebook page. at solstice underscore cut. Co- con- oh my god! <laughs> cut <laughs> at solstice cosplay, which is solstice underscore cosplay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I do the drawing and the arts. I don't talk <laughs> for a living because I'm bad at it. Don't worry. I don't talk for a living either because this doesn't make any money. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. Us. Money isn't real. Um, but the other thing that I'll uh, plug, which did actually make me a little bit of money, but it was just because I was like, sure, I'll, if you want to give me money. Um, my friend Jimmy Jackson and his wife, Kaylee Jackson, uh, just started a podcast mm-hmm. called, uh, well, it's about them playing video games together How and fun. talking about them. Yeah, it's super cute. Um, and it's called Date Bit. So D, the number eight bit. Date Bit. Yeah. Cute. Um, and I did their their podcast theme, intro music, whatever. Oh, okay. So, yeah. It's very nice. Yeah. Um, so check that out. Uh. I mean, if you want to just hear the theme that I did, you can check it out for that. But then stick around for the rest of the 20 for the minutes content. for listening to them talk about video games. And such. Yes. So, uh, but they just started it. It might be like every other week or something. But like, yeah, I'm really excited for them because like it, it's fun. Mm-hmm. And I'll probably be on it. Say we'll probably be on it at some point. Be <laughs> um, good people. So, yeah, uh, because one of the three things that make up my identity are video games so yeah check that out um (laughs) oh we did finish a untitled goose game oh yeah oh is it good it's fun yeah it's super cute Um, let me play it it's like it's it's short short right yeah Yeah, Yeah. it got game of the year right uh didn't it some people that's what i thought i thought it got i thought it got game of the year no people were like i can't remember because, like, the Game Awards, I don't think gave. Oh, uh, maybe it's I, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Don't hold IGN me. IGN gave it to Control last year, mm-hmm. uh, which I still want to play. Hopefully that'll uh, get a Game Pass soon. Is Untitled Goose Game on Switch? Yes. <gasps> get it! I need to. It's fun. I need to play everything. Yeah, super cute. Um, But, yeah. So, speaking of people talking about, <laughs> or speaking of married couples talking about playing video games together. Yeah. Um. Okay, yeah. Now, now my actual plugs. Uh, <laughs> so, Plug your things. Yeah, yeah. But first, I'm Santiago Ramones. I'm Megan Murphy. I'm Sable. Uh, you can find everything that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. I make music. You can find all of that stuff on my website, SantiagoRamones.com slash music. And you'll find my singer songwriter stuff. You'll find my electronic composer stuff on my soundcloud and if you just do like slash machinations that'll be my graduate composition recital which shows you what i'm capable of but is also the thing that i worked really hard on and i hope people watch it and listen to it and such very good uh thank you uh and then i also do stuff with power cycle and power cycle makes experimental electronic music we're trying a thing where we collaborate remotely and so i did a live stream you can watch that and so the thing is for 30 minutes we will sort of improvise on top of a thing so what i did for the first 30 minutes uh is i just made something from scratch improvised and so i did a drum groove and a bass line and then that's going to go to jonathan and he's going to do 30 minutes on top of that and add what he can to it. And then that's going to go to Breck and he's going to add that in 30 minutes. And then we're going to do another cycle of that, a power cycle of cycle. that. Hey. Okay. Um, so yeah, be on the lookout for that at power cycle music and all the things. We also have an album that is on Spotify. It is called too many damn cables. And I was in my podcast with my three things, high words. <laughs> I can do them. I always end my podcast with my three things. They shape my life philosophy. Those three things are love never fails. It's going to be okay. I might be wrong. 